Hi, Sportster Paul here with HSM Works trying to do T-slots and undercuts. It's kind of straightforward, but I ran into a snag, probably operator error, okay, with the 3D stuff. Let's get up and look at SolidWorks, okay? This is that same part we were doing with the, the fixtures. If you look at the configurations, you can see, you know, there's all the clamps, east-west clamps, north-south clamps. We're not going to mess with fixtures because we're still annoyed. With that we're also going to get into the fact that it doesn't show stock condition if you do a if you simulate stock simulate an operation in the middle of the tree it's got a button saying show it previous you know i'll we'll go through that after i get these things started so like the solid cam it's fairly straightforward just to make here Oh, I'm sorry. This is uh, because I was getting crashes and I couldn't figure out how to extend some of the 3D tool paths. I just said, well, let's cut these corners out where the where the t slot cutter was crashing. So that's done. OK, just just cut the perimeter. As you could see, the stock, I didn't put any excess stock because this is just that won't teach us anything. The, the basic thing, you use a 2D contour. You pick this line right here. And you have a tool that's about as thick as this slot. And I'm, you know, I did, I wasn't even too careful. I just did that from memory. So let's, okay, well, let's show you. Okay, here's my problem. When I talk about, oh, first let's, let's simulate, let's do a stock simulator. In case you think I'm crazy, this might just be a bug. Okay, oh, this is not working well. So we're actually going to let it animate through its whole thing. It's going to go real quick at the end here where it's got one slot cutter. Boom, done. Okay. Now, Visual Mill needed this to go through once so it knew stock condition at every point. Sorry for this little tangent, but it annoys me no end. Okay, so now we say stock simulation. Now, to me, when I'm down in that tree and I want to do a simulation, I don't want to see the stock defined in the job. I want to see the stock the way it is a minute ago, right? The last operation. There is this button here called specifies previously removed stock should be shown. Now that tells me that it's supposed to be showing the correct stock condition. And if for some goofy reason you wanted to see the stock that was removed by all the previous operations, you could click this button. But as you will see, clicking this button does nothing. I played with, well, maybe you got to define them all as rest machining. That, that just confuses, that blows everything up. Then you really get some disasters. So there's my problem with how it displays stock. Oh, let's, while we're doing it, let's do here. And let's simulate these two operations. And let's, oh, that was a regular simulation. Stock simulation. Stock simulation. Go to the end. And how close did I remember? Okay, I didn't quite remember that cutter's dimension, right? But I just went in the library, made a new tool. That was a bit of a pain, but nothing the end of the world. And define this cutter. So next. Oh, and that was a, that, that screen that's half off. That's the happy screen when there's no clash, 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 clash. Bam and into stuff. So the next thing is, well, you know, what's the miracle I have that exact slot? Maybe I got a very narrow slot cutter. 0.0315. So let's do it with this same thing, a 2D contour with the geometry here and then step downs. And then the, the person to watch for all of this is my pal. <laughs> I don't know the guy, Rob Lockwood. Can you see it? Just barely. There he is. Rob Lockwood, this one, how to slotting with equations. Because he shows how to figure out how to get this top height right. So the thickness of the tool maths in to that i'm not going through that because when i just try what am i doing wrong here when i just try to do this manually it's like it won't work so this is almost certainly user error same thing we'll light these two up we will say stock simulation we'll go to the end so now we've used the narrow tool of course you got that same problem you haven't carved this radius out where there's supposed to be a 12 bolt, a number 10 bolt. I forget what the deal is here, right? 
But what's interesting is it perfectly did to the top and it perfectly did to the bottom. I'm thinking this might be a, a coincidence. Maybe it, it, it actually lopped a little bit of stock off here. Is, that a, is this one a little thinner? Here's how you work this, the fantastic compare, hover over it. Okay, it's, it's a thousandth gouged. So this was just a coincidence. I thought it was working perfect. Come on, it's not happy. Get, get over here. This is why I love this simulator. Compared to, to Mastercam or Bobcad, you got to have this kind of visual simulator, not a bunch of little tags floating around gouge excess. So what could we do? Maybe just walk through this real quick. The edit. The, the tool is this narrow cutter, right? Right there. The geometry is just this blue line. Get the you know reverse to get it on the right side. I've had a lot of problems with that, too. I was playing with some tool paths. I say, I want a climb mill. I want the arrow pointing that way. And it cuts over here. And I had to erase that. I had that operation tied up somehow. I had to copy the single one and then add step downs to it to get this one to be right. Don't know, operator error, bugs. Uh, nothing else. I did say stock contours, which I don't think is important because I, I carved the stock out here. Uh, nothing else here. Heights, I set the heights exactly where I wanted them. You know, height here and the height here. I think the coincidence is my step downs, it just did its first one down from this upper height. I don't think it mathed it out or it wouldn't have that thousandth error in it. So nothing else to see here. 2D contour, this is all the stuff you don't change that they put right at the top. I just wish they had two big, right at the top, step down, step over. And, and that would just make me so happy. But not, not going to happen. Multiple depths. I made the depths the thickness. And it was 1.5 off. Let's correct this, 3.15. Will it round down? Let's make that tool path again. Wouldn't this be something if I just found a sloppy error I made? You're getting the real, okay, go to the end. Uh, it still looks a little, compare. Right on. So by entering that step down to be the exact distance of the tool, it mathed out. Now that's Rob Blackwood's a lot smarter, right? He's like, well, you, you don't want to step down the exact thickness. You might get a little cusp there. You know, you, you want to go more. So his thing shows you how to take that top height and put in a little formula and come down just the right thickness of the tool. But I think it's pretty cool when you just define top and bottom and you can get it spot on. Notice this time after fixing it, let's do a save. So, Oh, can't do a save now. Notice that it's blue, whereas it wasn't blue before because it had gouged that little tiny bit off. So there's things to like. The happy ending here, not a lot of clashes, so that's all good news. So that is that. We'll do our file, save all. Now, next thing is, well, I got that thin tool. So we went from the thick tool, it does one. If that thick tool had a radius on it, you could do this, right? You could do this slot with the curve with the fillet on it. Then we said, well, we don't have that. Let's use a thin tool. We figured out with a 2D tool path how to go down all those steps. That's this one here, right? But then, let's, can we use a 3D tool path? The answer is kind of. I, it, it, it's, <laughs> Rob Lockwood's also an expert on 3D, and he'll know exactly the way to do this. But being a newbie, being a non-machinist, and I'm sure he is, uh, it's a 3D contour. Let's go over it. Edit. This would be a quick show. Okay. So it's got that same narrow, the 31 through 15. That tool was in another program. The face. Pick this face. This is real touchy operation. 
when I moved heights around, it would just give up and wouldn't generate a toolpath. So that's why I'm not doing it real time because it would be three hours before I just coincidentally click on all the things. Let's see. Oh, I, I, got, I should go here. This is irrelevant. I think this just helps it learn stuff. This was off and this was off and it won't generate tool paths unless tool outside boundary is highlighted inside or center here I can show you those don't work you just don't get a tool path you get nothing here heights uh, I, I tried playing around with heights because what's going to what you're going to see is there's going to be a little bit of material left on the top side just the way that solid cam would leave a little material on the bottom and this has to be how they define the beginning and stepping down to get the first tool I have no idea but there's going to be a little here so I, I went around and around in circles. Okay, move this height up here. Let the thing cut this surface. Well, I won't do that. Okay, wait a minute. Go back to geometry. Select not just the fillet I want, but select this flat and this. Move the height up. Won't do anything. Refuses. Okay, uh, go here. But now for the height, where are we? Top here. This plane... Well, just move it up a few things. You know, this uh, Rob Lockwood would do uh, equations and stuff because of the tool. He understands all this. I'm like, well, just move it up a couple of thousands. Let's clean that off. Nope. Can't, won't generate tool paths. I just run into a thing. So the contour, all the stuff you don't care about. This is the step down. So it's a 31,000 tool, 0.0315. And I said, well, let's go down in 10,000 steps. So it's going to follow this curve pretty darn good. You'll see that. I don't think I, it mattered. This was default stuff, right? I said climb milling. Uh, nothing checked here. And then I, I never mess with the linking, right? Maybe I'll have to if I'm trying to extend. Maybe that's how I could have gotten the 3D tool pass from bombing into the stock in the corners. I tried, did I try stock? Uh, where is that here? Not check surface. No, see, that's a 2D thing. It's like two different programs. That's what you got to understand. The 3D is done by module works, almost certainly. Most every CAM program buys them from a module, from module works, puts it inside their code base, and all they're doing is making a graphical front end to feed the parameters into the module works module, and module works sends you back the tool paths. That's what generates the, the actual paths. Okay, so it's two different programs, and you got to get two different mindsets when you go between 2D and 3D. So that's what's cute about this show. It'll show you both. Um, all right, let's see if we can regenerate it. Did it work? I guess it did. Generate tool path. It's already valid. Just do it over and make me happy. All right. Now, here, because we can't do stock condition like you should, you use a control key and then pick both of them and then say stock simulation. And we'll just, you want to see it? Now, nah, let's just go to the end. Notice, it leaves this little green thing. And I could not figure out a way just to have this start higher. It doesn't want to. Since it refuses to do tool boundary inside, onside, center, you know, that was my first thing. Well, if I could do it, make it center, would it be the center here of this edge? I don't know. I mean, how's it dealing with a slot cutter? The way to fix this is... Uh, well, the way I would fix this, do a 2D with the, with the uh, geometry being this top line, you know, st step it down the thickness of the tool and just clean it up with one tool D 2D tool path, right? That's the way. The other way that you can do it, if, if, you know, because this is an, a, a thing about how it's picking the, the points on this curve to do its step downs, you can... Make it an absurd, if you got five hours to wait watching your machine, you say edit, go to our passes, and instead of going down 10,000, you know, go down, what, a thousand? This is going to be a lot of tool paths. It's going to think a long time, and it's going to pave this thing. See all those tool paths? Thousands of an inch each. Obviously, that's absurd, but you know, stick with me. Go here, stock simulation. No, this button does nothing. I don't know what that's for, but... And then just go to the end. It'll have to think for a while. But because you've tightened that step down, 
that's now it's perfect, right? It's blue there, blue there. So that's kind of kind of a happy, happy thing to do. So that was my fun. And I hope I've made it clear this 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 problem. I don't know if this thing would obey doing stock simulations. I guess it would. It's just it's just tracing, right? This isn't the end of the world. Let's show this. And let's go here and speed it up a little bit. Speed it up a little bit. Oh, we got to speed it up a lot. This is that. Uh, OK, so it finished. And then let's Oh, see, the button doesn't work anymore. Previously remove stock. Say start over. Previously remove stock. What does that mean? You know, I need a 50 page software manual to tell me what the heck this is about. I wonder if this is one of those where you go, yeah, a little bit faster and it becomes instantaneous. And I think what I'll do, because why be absurd? Let's go back here, edit and not make an absurd tool path because that'd be ridiculous, right? Let's take one of these zeros out, regenerate and that'll get coarse again. Then we'll do a file save. All right, it does adequate, you know, I think I need a computer science degree in a year or two and, and watch every Rob Lockwood video ever made to understand how the 3D tool paths are going to work. You know, I, I could never get it to stop wrapping around the corner of the, of that slot. I try, I tried putting check surfaces here and there and that doesn't matter. So I'll put all that to operator error. It's good enough, right? That's all I'm, I'm an analog guy. All I want to do is get close enough so I could make this part, which I want to use in this motorcycle redesign, this engine I designed. So that's the whole point of this. So we're getting closer. HSM works is doing the job, T slots and undercuts. Thank you very much, Danish programmers. All right, Sports to Paul here. Hope your cam journey is fun. We'll catch you next time. Bye.